Hey y'all, Coach Unify here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And we're talking about Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, when the Messiah told us not to go to the Gentiles, the Samaritans, but go to the lost sheep of Israel. Okay. And in this video, we're going to find out why. All right, because that seems um, strange to go to those that are lost. Yeah, it does seem strange, but by the end of this video, I think it's going to make sense. All right. So let's come back to this verse. Okay. In the meantime, we're going to look at some other verses to see what this is talking about, who these people are, to get an understanding of why he told us to go to Israel and not go to the Samaritans and the Gentiles. All right. You know the difference between a Samaritan and a Gentile? Um, I do not. Okay, well, we're going to find out here too. Like I said, let's come back to this verse. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Now, the first verse we want to come over and look at is in chapter 53 of the Third Testament of the Bible. All right. And since we're only talking to Israel, I guess we don't have to spend a lot of time on explaining them about the Third Testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a requirement to be Israel, to, yeah. to be reading the Third Testament of the Bible in these mm -hmm. days. Yeah. Some of you guys are new to the Third Testament. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. But we're down here in chapter 53, which is the time of judgment has arrived. And we're going to come down to verse 27. If you would read this verse. The time of the harvest has come for each spirit. And that is why you behold confusion among men. Yet I tell you truly that amidst that chaos, each person shall reap what they have sown. And we've heard this, right? Right. Well, and what he's telling us now is that we are pretty much in judgment day. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And this is the time when, you know, a lot of people are in pain, a lot of people are in confusion, a lot of, you know, strange stuff going on, as well as natural catastrophes going on. This is our judgment mm -hmm. or okay. part of it. Mm -hmm. But look at verse 28. And what shall become of my children who have always failed before my law? Truly to all those who slumber without wishing to analyze, without studying my lessons, the trial shall come like a whirlwind that make them fall, while to those who have obeyed my teachings, it shall come as an encouragement to compliance, like a beautiful prize awarded by God. So it's two two different people described here. Yeah, those who are compliant with the law and those that are not. These are Israel and the Gentiles here. Okay. Yeah? okay. You see that? Mm -hmm. A Gentile, the definition of a Gentile has nothing to do with race or color or anything like that. A Gentile is somebody who does not know the Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I knew that it had nothing to do with the different nations and stuff like that. But according to scripture, it has nothing to do with that. But it has to do with those who don't love him. Well, what about the, those that don't do the law? No, it's not saying that those who don't love him. It's saying though a Gentile is somebody who doesn't know him. Oh, okay. Yeah, a person may love him, but they don't know who he is. Okay. Right? You know, like uh, John chapter one and verse one told us that he is the word of God. Right. So how many people are out here saying they love the father, they love God, but they don't bother to read his word. Mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. those are still Gentiles, too. Right. Some of them. Some of them are actually Samaritans. OK. All right. So right here we see all three people right there in verse 28. The Gentiles, Israel and the Samaritans. Right. Those Gentiles are the ones who have failed before the law. Mm -hmm. They don't know who the father is. Okay. They don't recognize that he is the word made flesh right. or the law made flesh. Mm -hmm. And so they are in rejection of that law. Yes. Mm -hmm. So those would be the Gentiles. And then you see right there, it says all those who slumber without wishing to analyze, without studying my lessons, this would be the Samaritans. Okay. So that's the difference between a Gentile and a Samaritan. A Gentile is a person who doesn't know the Father at all. Mm -hmm. A Samaritan is somebody who knows who he is, but is not, like it says here, studying. Because the Samaritans actually came out of Israel. Is they right? came out of Israel. They are the other ten tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. right? But you remember, they assimilated into the Assyrian nations and took on their culture and even their identity almost. So they are the ones who know of the father and even believe in him they're just not going to uh, study him they're not going to worship him they actually don't want anything to do with him well i wouldn't say they don't know anything to do with him it's just that they haven't taken the time to do like, their proper studying or okay. like i say it's analyzing mm -hmm. right but look what happens to him here 
It says the trials shall come like a whirlwind that makes them fall. Mm -hmm. So in this tribulation, these guys can expect different things to happen to them with the purpose of pushing them toward the law. Right. Some of them are going to understand that that is their only way of salvation is through the word and through the law and through practicing and applying what those instructions tell us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be easier to understand if we said instructions instead of law. Mm -hmm. Well, the law is the instructions for survival of the tribulation. Right. So the Samaritan type person will actually get the trials that's going to push them toward the law. As well as the Gentiles. Um, the Gentiles would be those who are never going to recognize okay. the law. Oh, okay. Yeah. Again, these are the people who are in rejection of the law. Okay. Um, some of the scripture refers to them as heathen. Okay. I knew... I see that they are in rejection of the law, but I did not know that they never would like come to the light or come to the understanding where they want to, you know, follow the law. Well, if they do want to ever come to the understanding, that will put them in the Samaritan case where right. they're kind of on the fence. Right. Right. And then it's kind of, uh, I want to say a 50-50 chance because the scripture refers to it as one third. But they have this chance, this one third to two third chance of actually adopting the law. Okay. Um, whereas the other ones, the heathen, they're just never going to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's kind of why the Messiah was saying, you know, don't go to the Gentiles mm -hmm. because they're never going to get it. And we're going to understand a little bit later um, why he tells us not to go to the Samaritans either. Okay. But then you also notice Israel in here. Right. Mm -hmm. Where it says, while those who have obeyed my teachings, it shall come as an encouragement to compliance. That's right. So these people having always followed these instructions, um, some of them don't even know why or understand why we're following these instructions. Mm -hmm. Well, when this tribulation or this apocalypse starts, it's going to make sense to them because they're actually going to know what to do. Right. When to rest, when to have feast days, you know, what to eat, what not to eat, you know, when to take a bath, a whole lot of the rules or are in those instructions simply for the survival of the tribulation. Right. But before we get off of this, let's look down at verse 29, going back to the Gentiles here. Okay. Because there's actually another group mentioned in verse 30. But so at, this is an aside. No, let's, let's look at 29 and 30. Okay. 29 says, in this time, those not prepared to renew themselves shall know the greatest bitterness and shall be raised from the earth, losing thereby a precious opportunity to atone for their faults and reconcile. So these again are those Gentile or those heathen that's never going to get it. Mm -hmm. Well, you see that they are slated for the greatest part of this tribulation. Right. They're going to get the worst of it. Mm -hmm. When you read the book of Amos, it makes sense mm -hmm. who these people are. You know, they was actually born in this time just for this greater bitterness. Right. That's what's going to actually help them to reconcile for their faults too bad they're going to have to do it in the spirit world right while the rest of us can atone here on the earth and maybe even get to see the kingdom of heaven yes and the reason why i say maybe because look at verse 30 in contrast those who pass from this mansion to the spiritual mansion with the peace and satisfaction given by duty fulfilled feel illuminated by my light and if they are among those who must reincarnate again i will prepare them for their return to human life so that they may be brought clean again into life with greater spirituality and greater wisdom. So this right here, like we were saying earlier about the one third and the two thirds. Mm -hmm. So this right here would include some of those who actually keep the law. Right. But what And so what he's telling us is not everybody's going to make it. Yes. Even those of Israel, not everybody's going to make it. Mm -hmm. But he's given a, a promise here that even if we do have to go on to the spirit world, if we do get caught up in this apocalypse and lose our life, then when we reincarnate back down here, then it's going to be a, a better life for us. Yes. You know, things are going to go well. It's not going to be as many trials on us as such. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go on to our next scripture to look at here. I may have should have done this one first. This one is coming out of the book called Gad the Seer. Yeah. Down in chapter 14, it's talking about the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Right. Giving us uh, a much detail on the tribulation. Well, we want to come down here to where it's talking about these books here. In verse 7. 
And then a man dressed in linen brought before the glory of the Lord three books that contained the records of every man. Now this is the same man clothed in linen that we see over in the book of Daniel in chapter 12. Okay. Um, he's actually all over the Bible. He's part of his judgment process. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, read verse 8. And he read the first book, and it contained the just deeds of his people. And the Lord said, These are granted eternal life. So here are Israel here. These are the people who are already keeping the law. Mm -hmm. they're, they're involved in these just deeds, doing what they're supposed to be doing down here. Okay. Right? Now look at Satan's response, though. And Satan said, Who are these guilty people? And the man dressed in linen cried to Satan like a ram's horn, saying, Silence. This day is holy to our Lord. So Satan, who is the slanderer, is trying to slander their names again. Right. He he automatically slandered them by saying they're guilty. Yeah. And that's what he does. He right. basically looks for fault and tries to report back to our mm. father and tell him what we're doing wrong. Right. Right. But we know how that goes, how we, he has to give them to the angels who doesn't bother to carry that message. Right. But we'll save that for another class. Go on. And he read the second book, and it contained the unintentional sins of his people. And the Lord said, Put that book aside, but save it until one third of the month passes by to see what they will do. So here are the Samaritans, hmm. those on the fence, right? It's what he's saying here, one third of a month, that's 10 days. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the 10 days of awe here. Hmm. We're given 10 years to learn how to live within the law. 10 years these people are given to decide whether they're going to serve our father through the law or whether they're going to continue to serve man or themselves or whatever. So is it sort of like a progression, like you first Gentile and then you're a Samaritan and then you become Israel? Um, for a lot of us, yeah. I mean, some of us would have been born in houses where we have always kept the law, but others would have been born in Gentile houses and then they would have had to learn how to live the law like myself i was born in a gentile house and i had to learn to live in the law so in the learning time are you considered a samaritan um well until you actually get reunited around the law yeah okay. until you keep the law you are a samaritan on second thought you would be the lost sheep of israel wouldn't you all right but let's read about the other group here the gentiles and he read the third book and it contained the wicked deeds of his people and the Lord said to Satan, these are your share. So these are the people who are never, like, like the Third Testament said, they are never going to obey the law, no matter what happens to them. Hmm. So after the 10 days of awe, they're turned over to Satan. After these 10 years, this is when we hear about the other apocalyptic events. Well, this is going to be Satan's share and you see what he does with them. Take them and do what you want with them. And Satan took the wicked to a wasteland to destroy them there. Yeah, remember the Third Testament said they're not going to have the opportunity to reconcile. They're right. actually going to pass on to the other life. Mm. Well, this is how they get there. Satan aids them, basically getting his share. And this is what a lot is going on here, guys. This is why there's so many false prophets in the world and people trying to lead us astray. Um, you know, Satan has to get his share. Mm -hmm. It's always been slated like this. And before we get out, just in case it's important, let's read verse 14. And the man dressed in linen cried like a ram's horn, saying, Blessed are the people who know the joyful shout, O Lord, who walk in the light of your countenance. See, now this joyful shout right here is talking about the trumpets blowing. Okay. Now, this is why this chapter is so important, because it starts off talking about the uh, tribulation. Uh, and it even talks about Rosh Hashanah there. Mm -hmm. That's how we know when this trumpet started blowing so many years ago, mm -hmm. right? And the Third Testament describes it as the vibrating echo of the trumpet right, right. that's drawing us back to the Father. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's come over to the Shepherd of Hermes and let's get a little more detail about these people because right. it's not so clear yet why we wouldn't go to the Samaritans and right. try to lead them back. Right. Well, let's look down here. We're in the Shepherd of Hermes. Um, this is going to be the meat of this class, um, and I'm sorry I can't do it due diligence because it would take so long, um, but I would refer you guys back to the playlist that we created. Mm -hmm. um, took us 13 hours to make it through this chapter alone. Right. Yeah. So, or over 13 hours, um, but you guys can check out that playlist. I really want to just hit the highlights here as we talk about these three different groups of people. Okay. All right. 
And I plan on, you know, covering more of this, but I really, like I said, want to get into this part here. So let's start all the way down here in verse 34. Again, those six men commanded the multitude that they should bring stones out of the 12 mountains to the building of the same tower. Now, if you haven't read the Shepherd of Hermes, this is, may not make a whole lot of sense to you about this tower and these stones, mm -hmm. right? But like Peter said, the tower will be made up of us who are these lively stones that are going to the building. Right. And that's what Hermes is doing. Hermes is the book that actually describes these stones that Peter was talking about. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is the Shepherd of Hermits. This is a very detailed book. Mm -hmm. Probably the only book that goes into so much detail about the kingdom of heaven and this tower. Yeah. Right? And then it's talking about the 12 mountains there. Mm -hmm. The 12 mountains, we learn, are the 12 nations that have heard the word of God. Right. Or heard the law. Mm -hmm. um, we hear about them all throughout the scripture when it talks about these mountains. Mm -hmm. Right. But like I said, Hermes is what's giving us the detail of who these mountains are. Yeah. Um, so they're choosing the stones from these mountains at first. Right. But let's go on. 35. So they cut out of all the mountains stones of diverse colors and brought them and gave them to the virgins which when they had received, they carried them and delivered them into the building of the tower. Now, these virgins we read about are the uh, 12 virtues. Right. And they are important to understand. We can't get into too much detail about who they are. Matter of fact, let's take a look at them. I think one of the important things that we should understand about them is that we have to have them. We have to take on their attributes before. Um, they're sort of like the gatekeepers. We have to have them before we are able to um, go into the tower. Absolutely. We, we have to be carried by these spirits into the tower. It makes sense when you, you know, see who they are. Look at verse 142. The first is called faith. The second countenance. The third power. The fourth patience. The rest which stands beneath these are simplicity, innocence, chastity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, and charity. So here's the whole armor of God that we hear about. Right. Right. We have to have this armor on or we won't be able to get into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, it says right there, uh, whosoever therefore bear these names and the name of the Son of God shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right. And I think it said um, in previous verses that those who do not may be able to see it, but they won't be able to enter. Well, it says that after 144 when we hear about these other Okay. Um, um, the powers, right. like the scripture said, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Right. Well, here are the powers. Mm -hmm. Here now said he, the name of these women, which are clothed with a black garment of these four are the principal. The first is perpendiciousness, the second incontinence, the third infidelity, the fourth pleasure, and the rest which follows are called thus sadness, malice, lust. Anger, lying, foolishness, pride, and hatred. The servant of God which carried these spirits shall indeed see the kingdom of God, but he shall not enter into it. Now, this is that war in heaven that we hear about in the book of Revelation. When, mm -hmm. it's, when it said that Michael is, is fighting. The, this is what he's fighting right here. He, oh. Yeah, he's trying to get these powers out of us. Mm. They have to go away. Else, like it says here, you may get to see the kingdom of heaven. But you won't be able to make it in. Hmm. There will be no foolishness, no pride, no hatred, no lying, anger. None of that will be in the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. So those of us who can't separate ourselves from this is actually going to be set beside the tower. Right. But let's come back over and see what we're talking about there. All right, B, verse 36. In which, when they were built, they became white and different from what they were before. For they were all alike and did change their form of colors. And some were reached up by the men themselves, which when they came into the building, continued such as they were put in. Now, this is a, this is great. This book is great, guys, when it comes to understanding the kingdom of heaven. It's actually giving us the timing of the tribulation mm -hmm. and even telling us, you know, when things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really have to, you know, read it a few times. I think I'm probably going to read it 30 times or so, but it tells us pretty much everything you want to know. Mm -hmm. You just have to read between the lines. Mm -hmm. Um but anyway, what it's saying here is that these individuals, when they were put in the tower first, they automatically became white. White stones. White stones. And some of them didn't even have to go through the hands of the virgins 
and they were put into the tower. Okay. But the problem is, is that since they didn't go through the hands of the virgins, they had various colors and shapes and errors and flaws. Mm -hmm. Well, three verse 37. These neither became white nor different from what they were before because they were not carried by the virgins through the gate. Wherefore, these stones were disagreeable in the building, which when these six men perceived, they commanded them to be removed and put again in the place from which they were brought. So again, like we were saying over there, the powers, these people would have had some of these powers. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be removed and taken out of the tower and set beside the tower, giving them the opportunity to correct. But yet they are still white stones, right? No, they actually are not. See right here, they they didn't become they white, become white okay. because they didn't go through through, the hands, the, through the hands of the virgin. Okay. All right. Look at verse thirty-eight. And they said to those who brought these stones, "Do not ye reach up to us any stones for this building, but lay them down by the tower, that these virgins may carry them and reach them to us." Like I said, this book gives the the, the timing, and I'm trying to you know avoid the timing of this, but you know it's talking about. The, before those trumpets were blown, mm -hmm. how many of us were comfortably sitting in the tower? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we almost thought we were good, you mm -hmm. know, until, you know, we actually get, you know, tested and uh, we didn't find out who we really are. Right. You know, I, I myself found out that I like anger, mm -hmm. you know, and I had, you know, a few other issues that, you know, powers that, you know, I didn't know about until those trials came up on me. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody has to go through those to make sure that this tower is clean and pure. And that's why everybody's going to be tested. So it's like we're sitting in the tower and we're thinking we're good. But once these um, um, virtues come up on us and start and begin to test us, we begin to see that um, we're yeah. not fit for the tower and we're commanded to be taken out of the tower, uh, put aside until we change or renew ourselves. Yeah. So here are the Samaritans again. Okay. Here are the people in the middle who have the opportunity to correct, you know, and if they can correct and then go on back into the tower. But if they don't, then those 12 powers have assignment to actually carry them off to a bad place. And you said that that timing that we have to correct ourselves is considered the 10 days of August. 10 years to actually get ourselves right. right. 10 years starting in about 2017, like I said, Rosh Hashanah, um, when you saw the Revelation 12 sign in the sky, that was letting us know that these 10 years have started and they end in about 2027 when Babylon falls and, you know, the curse is lifted. Like we see in Revelation, I think it's 22 and verse 3, the curse is lifted and then we can all go into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. We got 10 years to get this right. But anyway, going to the next verse. For unless they shall be carried by these virgins through this gate, they cannot change their colors, therefore do not labor in vain. So here you can start to get an understanding why it is we don't go to talk to the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. Because they have to go through these trials. Right. Right? You can't get in the way of their trials. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to be tested. Mm -hmm. You know? And I forgot the verse that says that, you know, um, he doesn't really want them to open their eyes because he don't want them to see because he don't want them to repent. And to me that makes sense because, you know, a repentant heart has to be accepted back. Well, a lot of these people have to go through these trials in order for us to be clean enough in order to go into the kingdom of heaven. Like we read about over, I believe it's Acts or Romans that says, through only through great tribulation can we see the kingdom of heaven. Right. All right. So I, the Messiah is telling us not to interfere with that. I think one of the interesting things um, about 39 is that one word that says, um, cannot, they cannot change their colors. Um, Without the help of the virgins. You got to go through those virgins to change the colors. Mm -hmm. um, that is how we're made pure. is through the hands of those virgins. Right. All right. Let's look at verse 40. So the building that day was done, howbeit the tower was not finished, for it was afterwards to be built. Therefore, now also there was some delay made of it. All right. So now it's starting to get into... Um, like I said, it gives us the timing here. And this delay is going to tell us about how long this delay is. And when you start to look at, you know, all that's going on here, it starts to make sense, mm -hmm. you know. But I actually want to start covering that in another class. So I'm going to save that for then. Okay. But what we're seeing out of here is these three different people over here in Hermes. Right. You have those who are comfortably in the tower, mm -hmm. who deserve 
to be in this tower. Mm -hmm. You have those who are set beside the tower and given the opportunity to correct. Right. Now, let's see if we can find the third group. All right, now to see what happens to those who, like the Third Testament said, the ones who will not get right, those who want to start to obey and come around to our Father's will, preparing themselves for this tower and the kingdom of heaven, we can see down in um, verse 131. But if we would, read verse 130 first. But after they beheld those women, which they saw clothed with a black garment, with their shoulders at liberty and their hair loose, they fixed their desires upon them being tempted with their beauty and they were clothed with their power and cast off the clothing of the virgins. So you have to ask yourself, well, why are they being attracted to these women? Mm -hmm. Well, because, you know, well, because they were in rejection of our father's will. Mm -hmm. And these angels, or some would call them demons here, have a certain job to do. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 31, 131, we'll see what that job is. Therefore were they cast off from the house of God and delivered to those women. But they that were not corrupt with their beauty remain in the house of God. This said he is the signification of those stones which were rejected. So these people are going to be carried back over. Um, so this is why they're actually going to receive the greatest bitterness of the tribulation. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Those who love hate are going to have a hateful apocalypse. Yeah. Those that are attracted to those um, women that we, we just mentioned. Yeah. They're right. going to have the greatest of the bitterness. Right. And so when we come back to the Messiah and what he's saying here, then it kind of makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. While we're reaching out to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. Right. Because these are the ones who are actually going to make it into the tower. Mm -hmm. They just need, you know, a little bit of coaching, so mm -hmm. to speak, you know, calendars, feast days, you need to know what the law is, different things like that. You know, they just need to, you know, a, a little bit of help understanding. Mm -hmm. Whereas these other groups you have, the heathen or the Gentiles that, you know, they're going to get the greatest bitterness. Right. Definitely don't want to be in the way of that. Right. And the Samaritans, well, they have to go through the trials that make them even want to listen mm -hmm. to the law and the truth in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? it, and, it seems as if you have a better opportunity, even if there are some corrections that need to be done with the house of Israel, you have a greater, you stand a greater chance well, when you're with them. Well, yeah, because the Samaritans, they're not going to listen until the trials come. Mm -hmm. It is the trials itself that's going to make them turn and do right. So you're wasting your breath talking to them because, you know, they don't understand. None of this makes sense to them. Mm -hmm. Why would they give up their lifestyles in pursuit of our type lifestyle mm -hmm. when they seem to be doing so good? Mm -hmm. Right. And so you might as well just wait on the trials for them and just concentrate on those who want to do right. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, we're going to go ahead and close it out unless we got anything else. Well, I got a better understanding of that. Um, it probably makes sense to me um, because even, like I said, even if, you know, we don't have it all together, and I'm talking about those of the, when it talks about the lost sheep of Israel, um, you do have a better chance than um, conjugating or assimilating to the Gentiles or the Samaritans um, for your information, for your key states, for your calendars, um, and things like that. All right. Absolutely. And guys, I want to apologize for the sound. Mm -hmm. Um, one of you sent us some canning jars and some mm -hmm. canning lids and right. that's what we're doing. Yeah. We're taking advantage of it. We're canning. <laughs> so that's the sound you hear in the background. We promise we'll do better later. But in the meantime, you guys leave us a comment. Letting us know what you think about all of this and make sure you have that bell notification button pushed because, Father willing, we want to pull out more classes dealing with the Shepherd of Hermes because, you know, times are really getting serious now. Yeah, this book is so important and it so pinpoints um, to the time that we're in now. Um, this information, I guess I would say, is, is prevalent. It's very, very important for us to know and actually start um, doing it. Yeah, but and you guys can check out the playlist that should be popping up on your screen now for the Shepherd of Hermes. Go ahead and, and check that out. Like I said, it's a lot of videos. It took us a lot of time to go verse by verse through that thing, um, through that entire book, but you'll get a lot out of it. Maybe mm -hmm. not as much as reading the book itself, but mm -hmm. you know, we do have some additional insights that we do add that right. will help clarify some of this stuff. So right. let us know what you think. And if you see any areas that we need improvement on, let us know in the comment section and we'll jump all over it. 
Get those corrected. And in the meantime, we're going to say peace and safety into your home. Shalom.